Hello, uh, my name is William Green. I'm a professor at MIT, um, and I was the originator of the reaction mechanism generator uh, development. Um, welcome to the reaction mechanism generator called RMG uh, workshop. Um, and this first video will give you an overview of how RMG works. Um, and then there's uh, several subsequent videos um, to help you learn how to use it yourself. Um, I'll show you some slides now. Um, but before I begin, I, I just want to comment that although I'm the originator of this, I am not the main developer of this. Um, this is mostly developed by a series of students and postdocs at MIT and also at Northeastern University um, and some at other locations um, over many years. Um, and so I was the originator of the idea, but this is an active open source uh, development um, by many, many people. And this whole project uh, builds on uh, decades of work by uh, many people um, across the world um, who developed the methods for estimating the rate coefficients, methods for developing kinetic models. Um, and this is just a, a convenient software package that we've developed um, to try to pull that all together and make it useful to you. All right, I'll show you some slides. Uh, it's your screen. All right, so this is me, William Green, and this is session one. So the reaction mechanism generator is a, a tool for predicting uh, what will happen in reacting chemical systems. Um, it constructs uh, comprehensive kinetic models of elementary reactions. Um, it estimates the unknown rate parameters and thermochemistry to get the equilibrium constants. And this is a large open source package under active development um, by many people. It includes many, many tools because this is a very complicated problem that you need a lot of tools. On the right is just one of the, the reaction networks um, that RMG uh, has constructed. And these are just the main pathways and there's many other pathways in this mechanism, for example. So the, the chemistry can be very complicated and it's very helpful to use a computer to keep track of it. Um, the RMG software package uh, also includes databases uh, with values for many of the parameters and also many methods for estimating the parameters in these complicated models. And I highly recommend you read this paper uh, by Connie Gao. Um, that is the uh, latest uh, current version uh, RMG or late, latest published version, published <laughs> version RMG um, description uh, in the literature. Um, there'll be other uh, papers coming out soon about this. So the purpose of RMG is to predict the reactive chemistry of a given system by automatically determining what species and what reactions are relevant under the specified reaction conditions. And the idea is to reduce the human effort required to construct a useful uh, chemical kinetic model and therefore make it more practical for people to have build and, and have good models for their systems. The current version of RNG is particularly well developed for pyrolysis chemistry and combustion chemistry, but the, the basics of it are not specific to the chemistry and it can apply to, to, to many other systems, not just to gas phase systems like that or, or high pressure liquid phase systems, but also to gas surface catalysis and to liquid phase systems where the solvent effects are important. Um, why do we need this? Um, the need for automating uh, the procedure of constructing the reaction mechanisms was recognized a long time ago um, because the models got really large. Um, so for example, on the left is a plot from an article by uh, Lewin Law in 2009, and it just lists how large a lot of published mechanisms are. And you can see that it's getting to be pretty common to have mechanisms with more than a thousand chemical species, reactive intermediates and so on in the model and over 10,000 chemical reactions. And when you get into that size scale, it's just very difficult for humans to keep track of it. And it's also very tedious. So humans can do it, um, but it's a very uh, long process. And unless you're very careful, it's error prone. Um, humans need to double check a lot and it's easy to get confused when you're working such a gigantic mechanism. Um, and, uh, and these are just as so far, um, people are interested in much more complicated systems than this. Uh, so uh, figuring out how to make a computer keep track of everything is very valuable. 
The ultimate goal is that anyone would be able to quickly and automatically construct a chemical mechanism for whatever system you're interested in and that the, the mechanism will be accurate. That means it includes all the important reactions and species and it has reasonable estimates for all of the parameters in the model. So you can use it, for example, to uh, predict the chemical evolution with time of the system. Um, so that's our goal. Um, this is a very challenging goal. And so we'll show you how far we are and teach you how to use the tools we have so far. But this is definitely an ongoing process. So how does RMG work? Um, so we have RMG. It's a software package. And you have to feed it inputs. So a very important input is you have to tell it the reaction conditions and the initial composition of your system, um, what, what chemicals are there and what concentrations they're at. Um, you have to provide it with access to kinetic and thermodynamic libraries, though most of these are, are built in to the RMG software package right now, but you may want to add additional uh, libraries of information of parameters that are relevant to your chemistry, rate constants that you know, thermochemistry you know of some of the intermediates, for example. Um, this is what those databases look like. They have a list of reactions, and they have, say, the Arrhenius parameters for those reactions. Um, they can also have thermochemical parameters. And we have very many, uh, a large data set of many parameters uh, right now, and, and we need more <laughs> to get, uh, be able to predict the behavior of more systems. You also have to specify tolerances. Um, there's uh, a few tolerances and options that control how RMG is going to build your reaction mechanism. Um, we'll, in, we'll, we'll recommend some default uh, tolerances to use, but you may need to adjust these uh, to make RMG do what you, what you want. You also have to specify uh, when to stop. Um, so the chemistry keeps going on and on and on, um, but you usually don't care about it after a certain amount of period of time or after, say, a certain chemical species that you care about is gone. So you have to specify the conversion of that species or the time scale that you want to do a simulation for. Um, and of course, the, the less conversion and the shorter time scale, it actually makes it easier to build a chemical kinetic model. If you try to make a model that's accurate for the whole you know, age of the universe, um, that could be really, really difficult. Um, so uh, uh, try to be conservative and just try to see if you can predict, say, the early stages of your chemistry first. Uh, before you try to predict very long time uh, behavior. Um, so RMG will then generate a kinetic model, a list of reactions and species and all the parameters um, that could be fed into simulation software. So for example, to Chemkin, to Kintera, to RMS, and also into computational fluid dynamics programs that do reacting flow simulations. Um, so that's the output of RMG is really the kinetic model. So here's how it works. So for example, this is a, a simulation of ethanol oxidation, where you have a little bit of ethanol in, uh, in stoichiometric mixture with, with oxygen in argon, and initially 1,500 kelvins. So this is like a kind of experiment you could do in a shock tube. And so we know we start with ethanol and oxygen and argon, and RMG will try to think of what, what kind of reactions can they do. And so it enumerates all these possible reactions that those starting materials can do. And then it estimates the rate coefficients for all those reactions and decides that this particular reaction is the most important. Then it keeps on adding more and more species that are found to be important um, until, in, in this case, it, it terminates um, when it's uh, put 42 species and 592 reactions into the core. Um, after having considered more than 700 species and more than 1,600 reactions, and it numerically tested those other reactions and species and decided that they weren't um, fast enough, important enough, that it needs to be into the model. So at the end, the model you get is the core model. So just to summarize what happened there was that um, we have species in the core. Um, that's, say, our starting materials. And they're reacted together. And they form some new uh, species and new reactions. And then we have to decide whether or not those newly formed species are important enough that we need to consider them. The ones that are new are all placed initially on the edge of the model. And then we numerically test to see whether or not to include them um, based on estimates of the concentrations of the species in the, in the model and estimates of the rate coefficients. Then we select some of those edge species. We decide they're important. We put them inside the model. Um, 
Usually we do this by estimating the rate of formation of the edge species, but there's other ways to try to select which species should be in the model. And then um, uh, we iterate. So now we have a bigger model because we put some more species in it and they can do some more reactions and so on and so on. And it iterates for a while and it stops either because you shut it off or because it hits a convergence tolerance that you set. Um, this method of selecting the edge species um, uh, based say on the rate of formation of them has some advantages. So one is that um, only the species and reactions that seem to be important because they're actually running to a significant extent are added. You don't have to guess ahead of time what reactions are going to be important in your system. The computer will just try to test them all. Um, and if you want to make a model with more detail um, and pick up, say, more minor side products, all you do is tighten the tolerances and RMG would automatically run longer and put more of the species and more reactions into the model to picking up more and more, uh, more subtle details of the chemistry. Um, and this uh, scheme works pretty well, um, but there's, it's not perfect. And sometimes you wish it selected some other species and reactions to put in the model, and maybe some of the species and reactions it puts in the model you, you think are kind of stupid. Um, so this is an ongoing research to try to figure out how to do it better. Um, now, where do we get all the parameters from? Um, if you have models that have, say, over a thousand reactions, you're typically not going to have experimental data for the rate coefficients of all thousand reactions. And um, currently, the main way we get the parameter values is fundamentally from quantum chemistry. So we do quantum mechanics and transition state theory to calculate rate coefficients. Um, and then we have to put that data into the database somehow so that RMG knows it. And then RMG will build the simulation and use those parameters and build the kinetic model for our predictions. Now, what does this look like inside? Well, we actually have a big database of rate coefficients and thermochemistry that we know. And we append the ab initio calculations to that database. So we have more good numbers in the database. Then we still have to estimate many, many uh, reactions and species that are, do not appear in the database. And we estimate those uh, using a tree structure estimator, which is like a classifier. Um, or we estimate it using functional group additivity ideas. And we can estimate it different ways as well. Um, and then RMG uh, has from those estimates um, will build the model. It also has the capability to calculate the pressure dependence of the rate coefficients, um, to do uncertainty analysis. Um, if you have uncertainties in the parameters, how do they propagate through? Um, it has some statistical mechanics capabilities to help you convert quantum chemistry into the parameters you need. And it also has ways to estimate the effects of solvents, uh, particularly in the thermochemistry, and we're wor working on adding it to the rate coefficients. And so all that's inside the software package. And then at the end, it makes the, spits out the kinetic mechanism. And it also uh, can give you predictions for some conditions. And then typically, after you're done, you'll realize that, wow, I wish I had a better parameter for this particular reaction or this particular species. And so then you might want to do more quantum chemistry calculations to get better numbers um, for the most important uh, parameters in your model. And so this whole process is actually iterative. Now, what does RMG do if it has to make an estimate of, uh, say, thermochemistry? So it looks in the database and sees if it can find the molecule. And if it uh, can find the molecule in the database, it will use the number in the database. However, if it can't find it, then it'll try to break the molecule up um, in, for example, using Benson's group additivity method, where it breaks up this uh, caffeine molecule into uh, a lot of small functional groups and then adds, adds up enthalpy contributions from all the groups. And we have a lot of extra corrections um, for making better thermochemistry estimates that have to do, deal with some things that's sort of about the three-dimensional structure of it, different kinds of cyclic and polycyclic corrections, ways to correct for free radicals. Um, and if you need numbers like this, these estimates, um, the rmg.mit.edu website has widgets that can make estimates for you using the same methods that are used inside the RMG software. Um, we also have a list of the types of reactions that occur, which is showing like how bonds break and how bonds make with different types of reactions. And so these are some of the reaction families. And now we have something, I don't know, 60, 70 different reaction templates like this for all different types of reactions that are known to occur. Um, and then for each of them, we allow the reaction to occur, and then we have some way to estimate the rate coefficients. Um, so for example, for the addition of a radical to a, a multiple bond, we classify the multiple bond. 
So we start out that it's just a general multiple bond. Then we say, well, it's special if it has nitrogen in it or it has carbon in it. The ones that have double bonds to carbon, they depend on what the other atom is. It could be you know, the carbon or oxygen or nitrogen or sulfur. If it's a carbon-carbon double bond, well, those are different depending on what's nearby. If we have a sulfur nearby, for example, or whatever. In this case, if we have a carbon-carbon double bond next to an alkyl group, we, we might classify that as the species here. Similarly, we have to classify the radical, which is the other reactant. And so we might classify that radical, and then we can actually make a prediction. After we have them classified, we can sort and say, well, our, according to our uh, estimator, when this type of radical reacts with this type of double bond, then you get this kind of rate coefficient. We've written a lot of papers about this uh, for a lot of different systems. So here's some of the molecules that we've modeled um, and, uh, and different years. Um, and if you look on the Green Group website, you can see a lot of other papers uh, for different molecules too just to see examples of, of what we can do. Um, the, uh, the kinetic models um, are based on the quantum chemistry and, uh, uh, and rate estimates. And we find that they're good enough that they're actually at least semi-quantitatively predictive for a large range of combustion and pyrolysis experimental data. Um, so that's really great. So you can actually predict things before you do the experiments and your predictions are pretty accurate. We can build pretty big models pretty quickly, way faster than you can build it by hand. Um, but there's, uh, it's not infinite. And if, the, if you make the model big enough, eventually you can make the computer slow down. Um, the, this approach is really good for quickly seeing what current knowledge and current estimates for rate coefficients that are row would predict. It does not mean that it will be perfectly true because our current knowledge is imperfect. So, um, you can get a prediction very quickly that says this is what we expect, but then if you do an experiment, you may find something that you didn't expect, and then that typically would reveal that something is wrong with our current expectation or current understanding of the chemistry. So if, when we find discrepancies between what RMG models predict and what was observed experimentally, um, oftentimes that can motivate additional work to try to identify the source of the discrepancy and then sometimes that will lead to a, an advance in the current knowledge. In other cases, we'll find out that the current knowledge was fine and there was some bug or some problem in RMG, and that will lead us to develop better uh, software and methods to, to build the models. So you may ask, well, why aren't the RMG generated molecules perfect? And there's two different kinds of reasons for this. So one reason is that the, the RMG generated model uh, omitted some reaction or species that's important. So we call that type of error mechanism truncation error. And often this happens if the model building takes too long, uh, or the tolerances are too loose. And so we end up either we don't converge the model or we didn't converge it to a tight enough tolerance. Um, so then you, your model is just, uh, you stopped it before it really finished building the model. Sometimes RMG is missing a reaction template uh, for some type of reaction that's important in your system. And if you figure out that this is the problem, the, the solution is to add additional reaction templates to allow RMG to know about more chemistry. RMG also only knows about a limited set of elements. It doesn't know the whole periodic table. Um, you can add additional elements if you're interested in chemistry, but it's a little bit complicated to do it. But if you would like to get into that, you can talk to the RMG developers and they can help you to add additional elements. And then our selection criteria for moving species from the edge to the core is not perfect. Um, and so we're still working on making that better. Another problem is that even if you have all the right reactions, all the right species in your model, um, the, uh, the parameters uh, are not uh, perfect. Um, the, the rate coefficient numbers don't have an infinite number of significant digits, neither does the thermochemistry. Um, and so typically, often we find that the estimates for the crucial parameters are not satisfactorily accurate, and you need to go and do quantum chemistry calculations to tighten them. And then even then, you may not be as tight as you want them to be. And you may need to think of you know, experimentally measuring it or some better quantum chemistry calculation. But if you do do these calculations, we highly recommend that you add your data to the data set. So you'll help to train the RMG estimates to be more accurate in the future. I warn you that the parameter error problem is much, much worse at lower temperatures. And that's because the uh, errors in the Boltzmann factors 
uh, are exponentially amplified at lower temperatures. So if you have a small error in the energy or a barrier height, um, as you lower the temperature, that small error becomes more and more important. Um, so RMG is often really great around 1,000 Kelvin and often very poor at room temperature um, just because of this temperature effect. Um, and uh, you can use the sensitivity analyses and R uncertainty analyses in RMG to help you identify which of the parameters in your model are the ones you really should focus on to try to improve the model. Uh, a complicating factor here is that the two types of errors, the mechanism truncation error and the parameter error, are coupled together. Um, and that's because we de decide which species are important to put in the model and which reactions are important to put in the model based on our estimates of those rate coefficients. But if the estimate is wrong, our decision will be wrong. And so we will, might decide, you know, for example, we estimate that a rate coefficient is small. We might decide it's negligible and RMG will not include it in the model. But actually, if that estimate was wrong, then that was an erroneous decision by us. Um, similarly, if RMG does not include a certain reaction type in its template list, then we will never form any reactions of that type. Um, and so we'll miss that whole chunk of chemistry. Um, and then if those are omitted because we never saw them, then you'll never know that you needed to compute a rate coefficient for those reactions because you didn't even know those are reactions that could happen. And for discussions about these kinds of errors, I recommend you look at these papers um, down here um, that talk about this in some detail. So the overall workflow we recommend is first you figure out what do you want from your model? What are the conditions and what do you want to get out of it? Then you use RMG to generate the model you want. RMG will make a model for you. Then you do sensitivity and uncertainty analyses on the model to try to figure out which of the parameters in the model are really important. After you know which ones are important, you can check where RMG's numbers came from. And sometimes RMG's numbers may be not very accurate. They might be extrapolating pretty far. So you may decide to do quantum chemistry calculations to try to get better numbers for those um, important parameters that you think are not very accurate. And then you'll have better values. You can then feed them into RMG and then regenerate the RMG model now with the better parameters. And then uh, repeat. So now you'll get a different kinetic model after you, because RMG's construction of the model depends on the parameter values. So if you change the parameter values, you'll actually get a different model typically. And you'll iterate this a few times. Eventually you get to a point where you don't see any uh, species or reactions are really that important that you want to improve. Um, or you do the cycle and you don't really change the kinetic model much. And then you may say, okay, I'm done. And then you can validate by comparing your model predictions to whatever data you have or whatever reality checks you have about whether the model could be true. And if you do that a little bit, then you might convince yourself that this model is actually pretty good and then you might be willing to publish it or use it for something useful. So this is the overall view of, of how we think RMG should be used. Okay, so we have uh, uh, quite a lot of training videos to help you to learn about RMG. Um, the RMG has many features and components, and some of them are general that everybody needs to know, and other ones are very specialized for particular types of systems. We recommend that all the RMG users view lessons 1 to 3, 5 to 12, 15, 17, 18, and 22. So these are a bunch of videos that we would like you to, to view, and we suggest you do them in the order numerically. Um, if you decide that you're going to do the quantum chemistry calculations, uh, to improve parameters for your case, you'll need to understand how to do that. And there's some discussion about how to do the quantum chemistry calculations and, and convert, compute the parameters in videos 20, 25, and 26. If you decide that you really love RMG and you're really going to work on it seriously, you'll definitely want to see lessons four and lessons 23. Um, and particularly, for example, get serious about how to um, uh, really use the get and update RMG and update RMG's databases um, kind of extensively. And then if you have special kinds of systems, you'll want to see the special lessons. So for example, if you're working on liquid phase systems, you should see lesson 13. If you're working on high temperature gas phase systems or low pressure gas phase systems, then you want to see these lessons that are all about the pressure dependence of rate coefficients. Um, if you're working with very large molecules and you have a problem that the, are, the models get very complex, you'd want to use uh, see lesson 24 as a way to simplify your models. And if you're working with heterogeneous catalysis, you want to see lesson 14, and, and then you may need additional help uh, to work on that. Um, and uh, uh, you can go see the videos yourself anytime. Um, and you can also uh, email the RMG developers for, for questions. 
Um, and those of you who are doing the RMG training during an organized period will have office hours set up and we'll send you information about how to access the office hours to get assistance um, after you see the videos and you have questions. And then some of these uh, videos also have slideshows and have uh, homework exercises attached uh, to help to, you to learn uh, the material in each part. All right, well, thank you for coming to learn how to use RMG. I hope that it's uh, useful for your research. Um, and I hope that these training uh, videos uh, are helpful to you. Good luck.